Hello everybody, ACA Jared here. I've been messing around with crypto slightly. No, unfortunately I didn't crack the fourth one. Um, but I've been playing around with how the first three parts work and I thought I would make this little video to explain it. There's quite a lot of source code here, don't worry, I'm not going to review all this. Um, what I am going to do is go down through this slowly here so that anybody who actually wanted to uh, type it all in go ahead or if you want you can just message me and I will be happy to give you this file and then you don't have to type anything um, so in a second what I'm gonna do is start the program and I'm gonna go step by step and explain how the different parts of cryptos work so first cipher up at the top part one it's not always really clear looking at cryptos where one message ends and one message begins so the first part it goes from the letters emu to the letters mfd that's part one and it works kind of like a it's almost a quagmire type three but i think maybe there was a slight mistake in the way that uh, Mr. Sanborn understood the way that it worked but maybe he just did it his way and it's kind of like a quag 3 but not exactly. The plain text alphabet and the cipher text alphabet are the same. It's a keyed alphabet. It's made the same way that we make alphabets in the ACA. Uh, the keyword is K-R-Y-P-T-O-S, Kryptos, the name of the statue and then A through Z the same as we always do. The key word that you need to go vertically is palimpsest. And that is spelled P-A-L-I-M-P-S-E-S-T. -E what it means is a document that used to say something else and then it's been overwritten and there's a little bit of the original message uh, remaining. What we might normally do is we would align the key letter of the ciphertext alphabet with the A in the plain text alphabet and in the type K3 it's still the same alphabet so we would normally be aligning the letter P under the A however that's not what Jim Sanborn did and I guess there's really no requirement for him to uh, the ACA handbook does say you can align it with any letter if I'm not mistaken so in this case you just align the P with the K uh, you line the P with the first letter and you're going to do that all the way down P-A-L-I-M-P-S-E-S-T all aligned with the letter K that's going to give you 10 ciphertext keys okay underneath the plain text key which is also the same key so then you would go ahead and decode it the way that you would decode a, a K3 this is what it says. It says, between subtle shading and the absence of light lies the nuance of occlusion. And he spelled occlusion with a Q. He says he did that on purpose. The second part of Kryptos works exactly the same way. The cipher text starts with VFP and it ends with ETG. It's quite a bit longer than the first one and the keyword for this one by the way it's the same alphabet same crypto alphabet for the plain text alphabet and the cipher text alphabet the keyword is abscissa a b s c i s s a and you align it the same way as we did with part one they all line up under the letter k and you decrypt it the same way that we decrypted quag type 3 before up here and it says it was totally invisible how's that possible they used the earth's magnetic field the information was gathered okay I'm not gonna read all this but if you want to see what it says you can go ahead and read it there's uh, X's in here which I think represent stop when you're sending a, a telegraph message I could have spaced it out, but uh, I didn't. So then we move on to part three. Part three is a pain in the butt. 
and I have to give credit to Ilanka. I read her article, I did what she did, and it works. Uh, it's a transposition cipher. The letters don't change, they just move around. And let me just tell you, I spent a day and a half messing around with this thing in a text editor and on the computer software writing the program. It's a real pain. So the ciphertext starts with uh, the little question mark. And actually, you don't need that question mark. Yolanka uses it in her decryption method, and so did I, mostly just because she did and I was following along. But it turns out that you don't need it. I'll show you why at the end. So the first ciphertext letters are E-N-D-Y, and the last ciphertext letters are D-O-H-W. That's part three. After that, you get the ciphertext for part four. No, I don't know what it says. I have some ideas. I'm working on it. I don't even know what kind of cipher it is. I don't know if anybody really does. I have some tests I'm going to run and see if I can break it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, it looks like I accidentally printed out the ciphertext twice here. Sorry about that. You're going to stack it up in a way that Ilanka found. Uh, basically, she did a few extra steps, but what you're going to do is the first row stops at DOHW. The second row is one character longer, and it gets uh, FOAS at the end. The third row, uh, I put the question mark in there because Ilanka did, and it works. It kind of tells you, okay, there's there's a missing space here from now on. But you could just put a space there. But I guess it, it kind of serves a purpose. It tells you something changes right here. We need to put a space from now on. So this third row, it ends with LLSL. Fourth row ends with P-I-E-R-O. Uh, the next row ends with C-A-E-W. The next row ends with K-L-M-L. The last row ends with E-I-O-Y. And then you get these two little bits down here. Um, Alanka's steps show uh, E-H-A and T-E-Y over here at the end of the top two rows. They're just uh, hanging around over here where I'm moving the mouse. And then they move down here when she's done uh, stacking up all her rows. So also, uh, these rows are reversed. If you look at Alanka's solution, um, when you start to break these rows down, they're upside down. Slowly actually reads upside down. Everything reads upside down. So when I wrote these rows out, I stacked them the right way so I can read down slowly over here desperately. It's about every fourth every fourth character back uh, but I'm gonna show you how that works once you start to break off the last four characters and this space here at the end of the first row that's important you have to have that I kept it right here notice you basically are gonna stack all these uh, four letter segments all the way down so you would start here at OHW space, right? And then you go here, FOAS, and then LLSL. And when you get all the way done with taking four letters off the end of these rows, then you move over four more off the end and you start again at RTVD. And you can see that right here, RTVD. And you're going to take off four more off the end all the way down. And you're going to keep doing that all the way across these rows. You're going to take four off the end all the way down, all the way down, all the way down, all the way down, all the way until you get to these last four. There are some spaces in the question mark involved. And you can see that down here where we get to the end of the, the columns. There's the question mark and then there are some spaces. So we preserve those from up here where I had to do that also. This cipher is really a little bit confusing. It's clearly made by somebody who's not following the strict rules. But 
there's nothing wrong with what he's doing. If you want to be tricky, you might do stuff like this. So now that we have these columns, you could read down them, right? Slowly, desperately, slowly. Okay, you can read down them, but they're reversed again, right? You would read down row number four, then three, then two, then one. So what I did is I did another step and I reversed them, right? I reversed the columns. So now you read down column one, two, three, and four like a normal person would, slowly, desperately. All the way down, you come back up to the next row. Was removed and down and down. So if you read all the way down column one, then two, then three, then four, this is what the message says. Slowly, desperately, slowly, the remains of passage debris that encumbered the lower part of the doorway was removed and it goes on from there. So an extra little thing that I did right here, I wanted to see if I kept track of what the numbers were originally, what their original position was in the ciphertext, where would they wind up? Could I see any pattern? Could I figure it out? Could I see an easier way to to do it? Uh, the simple answer is no. It looks like a mess to me, but maybe, maybe you can figure something out. Uh, you'll notice here that zero is the first letter and that's the question mark. So in the end, we didn't have to have that question mark if we knew enough to put spaces in the right places way up here. If we knew enough to put spaces here so that the words would line up right, they would score well going down vertically, then we don't need that question mark. But that's how Alanka did it. That's how I did it. I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll catch you next time.